Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of I Think I'm Human Too. I um, recorded an entire episode yesterday, and I did not hit record on my audio. Honestly, that felt very fitting for yesterday's vibe of the day. So, I was like, you know what? I didn't even get ready yesterday. I had gotten a lymphatic drainage massage, and I was in pain. I still am. Honestly, I'm more sore today than I was yesterday, but that's okay. Um... And so I was like, maybe this is just the vibe. Like, I just wasn't supposed to speak to you guys yesterday. But speaking of lymphatic drainage massages, um, today's topic, what we're going to be talking about is cutting alcohol. How I got to do it, my take on it, tips on it, advice on it. Some of you guys wrote in on Instagram, and I want to talk about that. But yesterday when I was getting a lymphatic drainage massage, the lady was like, if you are a drinker, try not to drink for the next few days. I was like, I actually don't drink. She was like, oh, that's good. She was like, but it's really good for people who do take in a lot of alcohol because that's all toxins. Um, and the drainage massage is good for removing toxins from your body. Anyways, that was very random, but I felt like it was a good little insert intro. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So back in my day, <laughs> I'm 27, okay? Back when I was 21, I was a heavy drinker. 21 to 23, I was drinking seven days a week, multiple shots of tequila a day. No exaggeration. My body paid for it. I've had a couple episodes previously on how I quit, or not how I quit, how I was going through a lot of medical issues and come to find out, like, after changing my lifestyle, a lot of them went away, which is literally just mind-blowing. I remember sitting in a doctor's office and they came in and the, the doctor literally sat down. It was an infectious disease doctor at Mayo Clinic. He literally sat down and was like, you're Catherine? I was like, yeah. He was like, oh. Basically, my lab results were reading like I should be in the ICU bed and who I was and sitting in his chair, he was very confused. Anyways, so with that being said, lifestyle changes slowly and progressively over time have truly changed my life and helped my life. I am not attributing all of that to alcohol. There's multiple things from the age of 21 to 27 that have changed that have altered my life, but alcohol, cutting it has truly honestly just been so nice. I love it. And my change to no alcohol wasn't even like a purposeful, like I'm going to quit. So let's talk about it. 21 to 23, again, I was a huge drinker. I was always out. 24 is when I was with my husband at this point. Um, 23 actually was with my husband, but 24 is where I was like fully with him. We were living together. The drinking was not as common because we weren't going out. It was also COVID. So I was living with my parents. I was drinking seltzers at this point. And any type of alcohol that you drink is going to affect your body in different ways because a liquor is different from a seltzer. A seltzer is different from a beer. A beer is different from wine. All their side effects and what chemically makes up that alcoholic beverage is going to affect your body in different ways. Tequila. Tequila did me dirty. Tequila did me dirty. We're not going to talk about it. Anyway, so I was dating my husband. We were living together. I was on seltzers at that point. Seltzers and like beer. That's where I gained a lot of weight. Tequila, I didn't gain like a ton of weight off of, but my body felt like shit day in and day out. The seltzers and the beer, I gained rapid weight. It was actually crazy the amount of weight that I gained from that. Anyways, then I from like 26, 25, 26, I would say more like 26 into 27, wine and espresso martinis. Honestly, I lost weight from that because I drank red wine. So it wasn't like sugary. It wasn't like super high in sugars. And I drank like a really dry red wine. Anyways, um, where am I going with this? Oh, I probably should have taken my ADHD meds to do this one. Sorry, y'all. And I'm feeling like fuzzies on my face. Okay. Anyway, so over time, that was kind of like how I progressively, my my drinking progression was 21, straight tequila. Then I went to like seltzers and beers, gained a ton of weight, went to wine and espresso martinis. And I kind of like when I was in my wine and espresso martini era, I wasn't drinking as heavily like I was when I was in tequila and seltzers phase. So December of 2023, one of my girlfriends, Anissa, she was like, I want to do dry December. And I was like, oh, I kind of want to do it with you. Like, I've been 
saying how I hate alcohol. And I love alcohol, but I hate how it makes me feel. So in turn, I actually hate alcohol. I just didn't know that at that point. I decided to do it with her. And around Christmas time, I had a glass of wine. Mind you, I hadn't had wine in all of December. I hadn't had anything to drink in all of December. We were doing dry December. So I have wine around Christmas time and two glasses got me trashed, absolutely trashed. Because when your body detoxes and your tolerance levels go back down, when you come back, it's hot and heavy. The next morning, I woke up with the worst hangover ever. Not ever, because that's a lie. I've had way worse. But there was a really bad hangover. But the older you get, your body just can't take those hangovers like they used to. Talking about the anxiety and the hangovers, let's talk about Element. I've shared with you guys so many times Element before. It is the electrolyte drink mixes that we put in our waters. I kid you not, it's one of my absolute favorites. But not only that, the morning after drinking, I had a guy come over to our house, one of my best friend's husbands. He came over and he was like helping us and he had drank the night before and you could just tell he was down bad. And my husband and I were like drinking Element drink an element we literally put it in his water and a couple hours went past we're like how are you feeling he was like good and we we're like i'm telling you he forgot he even drank that drink but he thought he was just like feeling better without anything and i was like no i'm telling you those elements freaking work they are they're just they're amazing so i've shared with you guys so many times like we have so many different friends that drink them i've shared with you guys before they're phenomenal and I love it. I love that they've given Human 2 listeners a code. So if you want to try them out with a drink mix purchase, you will get a free sample pack. So go to drinkelement.com. So that's drink, L-M-N-T, drink element dot com slash human two and again that is going to get you a free sample pack with any drink mix purchase and the sample pack includes one pack of every flavor i absolutely love honestly i like all of them i would say raspberry is probably my top favorite so wanted to throw that in whether you're cutting alcohol or not cutting alcohol either way you need your electrolytes but especially on the days that you got those hangovers put an element in your water and i promise you you will feel a whole lot better So let's just, let's go back to that too. Hangovers are horrible, horrible. I remember some days waking up and being like, I need a burger. It's 9 a.m., but I need a burger in my mouth. I need to consume as much grease as physically possible. And then I need to go shit my brains out and go back to bed. And I would lose my entire rest of the day. I would have headache, body aches, fatigue, throwing up, um just grogginess then come to find out we'll get into this later the two days remaining after that really bad hangover i had horrible anxiety could not ever tell you why we'll get into that what else my acne was bad i was getting really bad like not i wouldn't say cystic acne because i know that there's some people who have genuinely cystic acne but like those really deep 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 bumps that would not go away. Those hurt so bad. Um, I would get those. I would get little bumps everywhere. So 2023 Christmas came about and I woke up with a really bad headache, lost an entire day. And I was like, why am I even doing this anymore? What is the point? January comes around. I am now in Atlanta with one of my managers. It was his birthday. And I decided to have two glasses of wine with him. I could not stop tossing and turning all night. My stomach literally felt like a squeeze ball, like trying to just contract and open, contract, open, contract, open, because it was literally like trying to process the alcohol and it hurt so bad. I literally went and forced myself to throw up. Um, And then I had like a little bit, I've had like a few sips of alcohol here and there. I'm not sitting here saying I'm, I have a, like I'm never touching alcohol again. So Honestly, I just like slowly faded it out and that's kind of how I stopped drinking alcohol. Now my body just genuinely doesn't like it. The taste of it isn't good. Honestly, it was just fading it out and didn't even like, it wasn't purposeful and now I just can't imagine going back. Like I've tasted like a couple of drinks here and there. I really do miss espresso martinis, especially because that was like my attachment to my dad and I, I just, 
um I miss like just going and having an espresso martini in his honor and I probably will on the anniversary of our last espresso martini together every year which is October 27th in case anyone was ever wondering and um yeah I just that was one thing for me is that I just it fizzled and let's talk about that because one thing is when I started telling people like "Mm, I just don't really want to drink anymore a lot of people were like pushy of like why what are you talking about what do you mean like you're not getting a drink well if you're not getting a drink I don't want to get a drink but like get a fucking drink I want a drink valid I remember being like that too like when a friend wouldn't order a drink I'd be like not me ordering a tequila by myself like that's so weird but also The more that I just told people, like, I just genuinely don't feel well when I drink. It doesn't sit right. Like, I just don't like waking up the next day feeling like shit. People started to understand it. Granted, I don't really have super pushy people in my life. My uncle was, like, the only one that would really, like, harass me and be like, you're pregnant. And I'd be like, no, I'm really not. I promise. That's kind of annoying, especially because I couldn't imagine, like, if I was a female who was going through infertility and then hearing that that probably would hurt. Thank goodness that wasn't my case scenario and he was just being annoying. But um, I definitely feel like there's probably people out there that get annoyed by that question because it is really frustrating where it's like, no, I just don't want to drink a fucking drink. It has nothing to do with a fetus being inside of me or not. Um, So I just set boundaries and I would just say like, hey, I just don't want to drink. Thank you. But I just am not in the mood for it. So let's, okay. Let's talk about some other things that I really want to, I found super intriguing and that I've learned after cutting drinking. The anxiety the two days after my hangover and the day of drinking is because your body is detoxing and you do have still alcohol in you. I feel like a lot of people think just because like once your hangover is gone, no, two days later is you still have that in your system. It takes 72 hours for your body to fully get rid of alcohol. So even if you have one drink or 10 drinks, it takes a full 72 hours to get it out of your system. That is absolutely crazy to me. So there's so many people that binge drink on the weekends and think it's fine. But then once you um, have a drink on a Wednesday, you you messed up all in it. Anyways, like once your body fully detoxes and then you do it again, you're just in a constant cycle of having alcohol in your system and detoxing. That is why there are so many people out there, again, that suffer with a lot of really bad acne and cannot understand why it's not going away alcohol. There's a lot of people that have a lot of bloating, weight gain. They cannot figure out where it's coming from. Alcohol. Look at what you're putting into your system and how often, even if it's just one. And I think that that's absolutely crazy. Another thing that I learned is if you are not an alcoholic, listen to me, if you are not an alcoholic, you are not addicted to alcohol you are addicted to the act of drinking. If you are not an alcoholic, you are not addicted to alcohol, you are addicted to the act of drinking. Let me explain. When you go out, it is just now engraved in your brain. It is part of your routine. It is part of your normal day-to-day life to order an alcoholic beverage because let's go out for dinner and drinks. Okay, I'll get a tequila soda. Some people are like, but how do you go out to dinner and drinks without ordering a drink? Well, you do order a drink. Water's a drink. Diet Coke's a drink. A Sprite is a drink. A mocktail's a drink. All of those are drinks. When your waiter says, what can I get you to drink? And you say water, they bring you back a water because the water is a drink. Just because the phrase dinner and drinks or going out for drinks does not mean that that has to be an alcoholic beverage. It again, it is so ingrained in us and programmed in us that drinks mean alcohol. I agree with you. It was hard at the beginning. You're like, wait, what? What do I order? I don't want to go out when everyone else is drinking. Okay, so back into the phrase, if you are not an alcoholic, you are not addicted to alcohol, you are addicted to the act of drinking. What helped What helped me, what is your drink of choice? Do you love a beer in a beer can or in a beer glass? Like you love a glass, like the... Um, a beer bottle, like a glass beer bottle. If you love that and you love the feeling of holding that, order an NA beer. You are still getting, the, you're messing with your mind. You feel like you're still hold, holding that beer bottle. You feel like you're drinking. You feel like you're included. You feel okay, like being like, oh, okay, I can be out without drinking, but I'm still part of the party. 
Okay, if you're addicted to and you love the drinks that come in like the fancy, tall, skinny glasses, order a mocktail. A lot of those come in those. If you love a red wine, ask for whatever in a red wine glass. I literally, there were some times where I would order a, a, a tonic water in a wine glass because I loved red wine. There's times where I'll order like a, a mocktail in an espresso martini glass just so I can feel like I'm having a martini. All these drinks are able to be ordered non-alcoholic, almost everything. And if you can't say that they're like, mm, no, we can't make that, like, oh, no, we don't have that as an option, say, can you put a fucking Diet Coke in a wine glass? Like, just so you can feel like you are part of the party. I know that sounds crazy, but it's true because your, your body is so addicted to holding what it knows. And that's what you're addicted to is the act of drinking. Going out with your friends, it's the part, it's literally the norm now. It's going out for dinner and drinks, hanging out with your friends. It's so odd because it's like, I feel like back in the day, people had so many more hobbies. And now today's age, like 20 year olds, 30 year olds, we all go to bars. Like we like to go out. We like to go out to eat. We like to go out to find new places. I'm a culprit. I love a new good restaurant. I love it. Going out with some friends to try a new place is my jam. Like that is truly my hobby. I love that shit. But that doesn't mean that alcohol has to surround that evening. So I also want to talk about what it's like to be with people who do drink. That's a big thing. How do you go out with people that are drinkers when you're not a drinker? Easy. Order something that you want that's non-alcoholic in a glass that you like. I do think setting the boundary again up front of saying, hey, if you know like your friend's like a drinker drinker, like you know those friends that are always like they're going to get themselves into some shit tonight. I would just be either one, don't go out with them, or two, just say, hey, love you so much, but like, I want to stop drinking for a little bit. I'll go out with you because I'll have a mocktail or a soda or something, um, and I'll still be fun, but like, I just want to let you know that once you might be getting to a point of like, ooh, this is a little too far, I'm going to go home. Set the boundary. I literally say that all the time. I just tell people, like my brother Aaron, when I first stopped drinking, he was still drinking. I don't think he really even drinks that much right now, honestly. I don't know. Um, But I always just say to him, I'm like, just so you know, I'm not drinking. That was what I would say to him. And he'd be like, okay. And I'm like, okay, well, if you get a little litty titty, that's on you. And he's like, I know. Just, I know, and I know there's some people out there that are like, mm, I don't know how to be around people that are drunk. Then don't. Find something else to do. Find another hobby. Find some find some ways to be friends with your friends outside of the bar. That was another really big thing when I first stopped, when I first like started to separate from a lot of the friend group that I used to have. Honestly, a lot of it was because I was like, what do we do other than go to the bar and drink? If we were not in a bar having a bevy, we wouldn't be together. We literally would not be hanging out. We wouldn't be friends. There was nothing outside of that relationship and that friendship other than alcohol. And truly, I looked at my friend group when COVID first happened. I was like, this is maybe the perfect time to find a new hobby and find out what I really want. And it's so funny how like it quickly started to fizzle out friends. Like, no one would really call me anymore because I wouldn't want to go to the bar with them. Granted, COVID was like closed, but everyone was going to each other's houses to just drink. Curdy's at the door. Anyways, what else did I want to tell you guys? It is hard. It's very hard. This is another thing I really want to talk about. I come from a family of alcoholics. Like genuine, the disease of alcoholism runs in my family. I do not have that. And something that I'm really, 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 really passionate about is when you don't drink because you choose not to drink. I don't like when people are like, oh my God, you're sober. Congratulations. No, please don't say that. Please don't say that. Ask me why I've choose to stop drinking. Are you like, oh, what made you stop drinking? You know, I just really don't like the way it makes me feel. So I just decided to stop drinking alcohol. That is somebody who is choosing. An alcoholic is genuinely working hard each and every every single day to say no to that beverage. I give them mad props and they 
deserve the congratulations on being sober. Congratulations for your 60 days. Congratulations for your six hours, whatever it is. They deserve that. Me being me saying, I just don't want to drink alcohol. Oh my gosh, that's so good for you. Like, that's amazing. I love that you chose that life. Like, that's great. But to claim the sobriety is really messed up. And why I'm saying that is for people who are listening who might like I posted a TikTok the other day and I was like, yeah, I gave up alcohol, like blah, blah, blah. There were so many people in my comments being like, oh my God, congratulations on your sobriety, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, I feel such a guilt because I know how hard those people work to be better and to say no to the alcohol and to put the bottle down and to find a new outlet. That is a genuine, genuine daily effort to be a better person for themselves me, I just say, oh, no, no, I'm just not drinking today. It, uh, there's not anything in my brain that's like, I gotta have that glass. I gotta have that glass. Like, I don't have those whispers in my brain. So I don't want to discredit all the work that those people have put in to hush the demons in their brain saying you do need that drink. Um, so I just wanted to say that too. What was another thing I wanted to talk to you guys about? I did open up on Instagram a questionnaire of people that had some questions. What a great episode to talk about Seeds DS01 Daily Symbiotic. I have shared with them on, I've shared with you guys on Instagram multiple different times why I started taking them for your gut health, the microbiome, all that stuff that's in your system. It also helps with like your heart health. So two capsules a day, you're getting gut health, you're getting heart health. We just absolutely love that. And then also just in general, when you're trying to make better life choices for your body, cutting out alcohol is obviously a great start, but also putting things in your body that are going to help other things as well. You're just starting on a daily ritual to a better health, especially with summer coming up. Travel is crazy busy for at least us. I don't know. A lot of other people probably take family vacations during the summer. One thing that's nice about Seed is that you don't have to put it in the refrigerator and it also comes with a travel little container, which I love because you just throw the capsules in there. You throw it in your purse. You, again, you don't have to put it in the fridge. You can be on the move with it. They are backed by science. It's two capsules a day. It's just absolutely phenomenal to just be able to do what's right for your body and take care of yourself. I I don't know. The older I'm getting, it's just more and more important to me. So if you want to support your gut this summer, go to seeds.com slash human2. Use code 25, so 25human2, and that'll get you 25% off your first month of the DS01 Daily Symbiotic. I will also make sure that that code is linked down below in the caption, and then also I will post a link on my Instagram stories so you can have a direct link and then also have the code easily accessible for you. I cannot stop yawning today. I apologize. How do you keep the temptation out? When I first started, I wouldn't have the drinks in the house. That is a big thing for me. The other day, we were at Trader Joe's, and I love, like, a deep, dark coffee stout. Like, a Guinness isn't my go-to, but, like, that thickness. Like, Guinness thickness, darkness, that's my shit. I don't like Guinness itself, but I just wanted to kind of give you guys the the sna- the picture in your head of like how dark I like my beers. They're always very um, high in alcohol because of how thick they are. And we were walking past them at Trader Joe's yesterday. And I was like, oh, one of those just sounds good. Like just a sip of it just sounds good. And I said no, because I was like, why do I need a six pack in our house? Like I don't need a six pack of that. It won't get drank. And there's no point, even one can, I would open it up just for the sip of it because it just sounds good, but I wouldn't finish it. So making sure that I don't purchase it, that was really strong at the beginning. There was times where like Raphael, granted, I'm not the person, like I've never been an at-home drinker. Raphael likes a beverage at home, like when he's watching a game, he'll have some crown or whatever. Like he loves to just have like a little glass and just sip. I've never been that. I've only always been a social drinker when I'm out and in the world. Like I've never, ever been the girl at home that was like, oh, I want a glass. Actually, I lied. At the last few months, like last year, end of last year before I quit drinking, I would have glasses of wine at home. Um, But I was never like, I have to have it. It was just that people kept coming over. It was like Thanksgiving and Christmas and there was wine in the house. So I felt like I needed to drink it. 
Um, but with that, I will say, just don't purchase it. Just stop purchasing it and just ask your partner if they are a drinker to possibly go a, like a week without it just so you can do the same of like getting the voices out of your head because then once it's the same thing as like when you eat dessert at night like you're just I'm trained my body to just want a dessert at night I have literally put that craving in my own head I never had that before but then I started getting in the routine of eating dessert every single night and now I crave it but it will take two to three days to break that craving of just not having Oreos in the house as soon as I know they're not in the house that craving goes away almost instantly because I'm like dang, it's just not here. Okay. The only reason I'm thinking about it is because subconsciously I know it's in the house. But if I were to just not make the purchase and know it's not in my pantry, I would probably have an easier time of being like, oh, I don't need it today. So that is one thing where I'm like, I definitely think if you just weren't to purchase it, it would help with the whispers in your head of like, ooh, don't forget you've got that bottle of tequila. Don't forget you've got the vodka out there. Um, and if you have a partner that's not willing to give up drinking, but you're really dedicated, just stay strong. Again, cut anything that's in the house that you have. And then when you're going out to eat, again, make sure you're ordering something that is non-alcoholic, but maybe in a glass that you like. It's so easy to be like, oh, I'll just have a Diet Coke, please. Oh, I'll have a lemonade. Oh, I'll have a water, please. Um, or no thanks, I'm great with water. Th- whatever the case may be. Um, so that's a start gardening instead yes you guys know that i love my thc cocktails i like the giggly brand there's multiple other brands out there um if you want like a microdose, i think can c-a-n-n that's a good brand for a microdose. i think they have some that are like two milligrams it just gets you to a level where you're like hee hee like you're still like having fun you feel like you're drinking like if we were to have friends over um and everyone's having drinks I would have a giggly like I'm not saying no alcohol is allowed again I am not an alcoholic where I have a genuine like fuck if it's around me I have to have it those I give mad props to people that have have are alcoholics and have quit drinking and can now be around it because I know that's probably very hard and again it takes a daily effort to say no but I don't have that voice in my head where I'm just like I'm good with a water when everyone's drinking um but I do love me a little giggly when when the party's going on. Um, no question, but been debating on cutting out alcohol, and I think this is my sign. I feel like if you have any sort of desire to, just try it. I'm not ever saying I will never have an alcoholic beverage in my life again. I will never drink again. I'm not saying that. I'm just more saying that I enjoy how I feel without alcohol in my system. I love waking up and not losing my entire weekend to an alcohol hangover. I love um, that my body doesn't feel inflamed. I love that the acne that I used to get is no longer. I love that I'm not profusely sweating. That was another thing. I would sweat from every nook and fucking cranny this body could give. My legs would sweat. My forehead would sweat. My stomach would sweat. My butt would sweat. I was just profusely sweating all the time. Now I'm like, I barely sweat. And it's so funny because I'm like, well, all I really drink is coffee and water. So I'm like, once I learned it was because your body is really trying to just sweat out all the toxins when you're if you're a heavy drinker and you sweat heavily um that's a side effect that I guess I'd like I don't think a lot of people knew because no because I didn't know it um if you have one what's your go-to mocktail I love anything with cucumber I can't go like even if it's just a freaking cucumber water with a mint fire like a sparkling cucumber water with mint fire what have you done in place of alcohol to relax after a long week? Honestly, again, um, I garden. So if you're not a THC girly, you can't do that, but, or you wouldn't do that. I don't know. There's a couple of things like I love a good melatonin at night. Those definitely relax you. I know that sounds silly. When my dad had passed, I, cause I don't garden every single night. I feel like a lot of people think I garden every single night and that's not true. Um, I was way heavier on guarding when my dad first passed because I just wanted to calm the the voices in my head of like, fuck, your dad's really dead. Like, I really just needed to be happy. I was really depressed. Gardening really helped get me through that depression and really truly just work through those thoughts with a smile on my face versus I'm not getting out of bed. But melatonin's a really good one because it kind of mellows you out. It calms you down. CBD gummies are really good. CBD is not THC. I feel like a lot of people think that it is and it's not. Um, CBD just kind of helps you mellow. Um, what else could you take at night that will just help you kind of relax? I really think if you're like really high strung CBD would be a good one melatonin just gets you 
really, really relax and just like mellow. I don't know. I don't know. Melatonin's good. And it helps you with some phenomenal sleep and shit if you really got to shit. Elaborate on cutting out completely or just occasional and if so, how often? I really don't drink at all. I haven't drank in months. Um, I've but like I again, like I've said, I've had a sip like the other night someone ordered an espresso martini and I wanted to taste if that place had a good one. Um, and it was absolutely atrocious. Um, what's a good bar drink to order while mingling in a bar setting? Whatever you want. Whatever looks good, sounds good. A non-alcoholic beer is always good. Um, like those NA Zero beers are good. A Topo Chico. I love getting a Topo Chico and just putting a straw on the top of it and walking around. Because Topo Chico is in the same can as like a seltzer. Nobody even notices. Nobody cares. What is the hardest part, Ben? And what's the most rewarding part? The hardest part is just people asking all the time, like, why? Um, I just don't like it. And that's just... But like, I'm also very... Like, I don't... I have pretty thick skin. Like, I don't get offended. I feel like I get more offended in this act of someone else like I get offended for other people in the sense of oh why are you pregnant because again what if someone at the table is struggling with infertility and that's like hard to hear like I don't know I don't know I just get like offended for like that kind of stuff I'm like no I'm not pregnant and like stop asking people that like I'll get like that and I feel like people are like like I'm offended because I was asked if I'm pregnant and I'm like, no, 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 no. I just get annoyed that like, that's even a question. Just shut up. Like if someone says they're not drinking, just shut up. So I think that's been the hardest part. The most rewarding part is honestly how I feel. I feel so good every single day waking up. Like again, my body feels so much better. Um, everything like flowing within my body feels better. There's just a lot of pros to it in my opinion. How to be around drunk people while being sober. Honestly, it is tough, especially when they're like your blackout drunk kind of friends. Um, but we're also at the age where I have really no... Back in the day, I would feel like I was responsible for my friends when I was drinking because obviously we're young and blah, blah, blah. But now I'm an adult. Like, we're real fucking adults. Like, I'm married with a house and dogs to come home to. Like, I don't got time to be babysitting other people, okay? So if you set the boundary of hey, I want to, like, I would love to do dinner with you, and but just so you know, like, once it gets to the point of, like, me going home, I'm going home with no questions asked. Like, I'm going to tell you I'm leaving and let's go. With that, because there's some friends that are like, no, stay, have another drink, or like, come stay, I want one more drink. Like, okay, well, then you enjoy your night. You have fun. Let me know when you get home safely. Um, If say a bunch of my girlfriends are going out and it's a girl's night out and they are purposefully going out to get drunk, one of two options. I either will not go or I will say I'll go for a little bit, but then I'm going to head out before it gets too rowdy. And I stick with that. Again, it's hard because we are so engraved and programmed to babysit those friends, especially when you're sober and you know they're drinking. You're like, damn, I should stay around and make sure they get home safe. It's not my responsibility anymore. We're not 21 years old and single at the bars anymore. All of my friends are at the age where we know you are responsible for yourself. I can't feel guilty if anything happens to you just as much as you shouldn't feel bad if anything happens to me. Obviously, you can feel bad, but it's not your responsibility. Uh, My responsibility is my husband and my three animals and maybe children in the world one day. But as of right now, my responsibility is within this household. I cannot babysit grown women, grown men. Like it just it just doesn't happen. So setting the boundary of saying I'm not going or I'll go, but I'm going to leave when things get crazy. Is it awkward in social settings to be sober when everyone else is having cocktails or beer? I think anything in life is whatever you make it. If you think it's uncomfortable, you're going to display uncomfortability and you're going to feel uncomfortable. Then people might feel uncomfortable. People might say, what the hell? Why aren't you drinking? If you are like, no, I don't give a fuck. I'll have a great time with my little water over here. Then people are going to be like, woo, let's go. I think it's whatever you make it. Um... Other than LaCroix type drinks, what else could satisfy or mimic without calories that you've tried? There's a lot of NA calorie free drinks. Um, I definitely think a LaCroix, a Topo Chico, a tonic water. Um, 
I know we said LaCroix. There's other brands out there like Poppies or Olipops are really good because they've got like good things in it for you, like prebiotics, probiotics. Um, there's just good things in it for you. It gives you a colorful drink. Like I used to love putting Poppies in a wine glass too. Um, how long until you notice a difference in the way you feel? Honestly, just within a few days. Like I said, it takes 72 hours for it to fully get out of your system. And then you'll start to notice less bloating. If you keep up with your water, you'll continue to sweat out. And if you really just go for months without drinking, like I notice a lot of weight loss just in drinking alone or cutting drinking. Obviously, you're not going to drop 10 pounds after three days you'll drop like the bot the bloating and you'll you'll maybe not be sweaty from alcohol anymore but it'll take months for your body to like actually start to regulate and be like oh, okay like this is how i feel with just water in my system this feels dope you start to lose weight i notice my sleep is a lot better um i used to think that like do you remember back in the day well, not back in the day do you remember being blackout drunk and feeling like you got great sleep but you woke up with anxiety the fact that you have to drink to go to sleep sucks because I'm like, well, then the next day you have to pay for it anyway. So like, did you even get good sleep or now you just exhausted the next day because of how you feel? So it's like, I get a lot better sleep now. Even my worst night of sleep is still better than my blackout nights of sleep. Even though my blackout, I was like really out for the whole night. It was, I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, how to stop the FOMO? Again, just order something too. Buy stuff that makes you feel like you're drinking. You, If you are not an alcoholic, you are not addicted to alcohol. You are addicted to active, active drinking. Nobody's telling you to stop drinking it. non-alcoholic. Nobody's saying you can't come if you're not having liquor. And if they're saying that, you don't want to be friends anyways. Um, I think there's multiple different ways that you can cut that FOMO and still feel like you're having a grand old time. So... Okay, next episode, I want to sit down with Raphael because I feel like that would be a really good episode to talk about like what it's like for someone who is still currently drinking and what it's like for someone who is not drinking to be in a relationship from both sides, like from a non-drinker, what's it like to be with somebody who does enjoy a drink? When somebody is a drinker, what's it like to be with somebody who's not having a drink? So if you have any questions for Raphael or I, I will put on Human 2 Stories a questionnaire for you to have um, some space for Raphael and I to ask a question. If you have a story that you'd like to share with us of your drinking journey, um, advice, a storyline, anything, I probably missed some stuff, feel free to email us at human2 at katherineebbs.com. Um, what else? Yeah, feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions, comments, anything that I didn't clarify on, anything that you might want to ask Raphael, if you want to ask myself of what it's like as a partner. Um, we will be in touch in the next few days and we will see you guys next week. Thank you guys for being here. I know last week we did not do an episode. It has just been so hard getting in the rhythm of things. I do want to start back out up couch convos. If you are in Dallas and you want to do a couch convo, again, you can email human2 at katherineebbs.com. Put in the title in your description, Dallas couch convos, um, just so like that email can get filtered differently. There's a couple different things. I am going with some girls I've set up to do just coffee dates with them since moving to Dallas and just like kind of trying to find a grief community in the sense of just really getting a new friend and then also relating in grief. I feel like it's just been a big transition and I kind of want to give that space to other women out there who might not have anyone in their friendships or relationships that have lost a parent and they might need a friend or an ear to listen. So starting that up and then, yeah, we got some stuff going on. So thank you guys for listening. I will see you guys next week. Let me know if you've got any questions or comments. Goodbye.